Before we left for break, we were working on the unit circle. And we, what we learned before break about the unit circle is if you can memorize quadrant one, you know the whole entire unit circle. Again, we got the 30 degree angle, radical three over two, a half, and then flip it for the 60, one half radical three over two. And all the 45 degree angles are radical two over two, radical two over two. Again, to figure out what kind of angle it is, it's about the reference angle, how far away it is from the x-axis. That's what makes this a 30. This one is also a 30 degree angle. Even though it says on it that it's 150, it's 30 because it's 30 away from 180. And 120 is 60 away from 180. That's why this one's really a 60 degree angle. And they're symmetric. You can fold it across it like a butterfly or fold it this way to find what all the numbers are, which makes it really quick to memorize. And then again, where all the numbers come from in the formulas, we have the classic Pythagorean identity from the triangle being x and y, x squared plus y squared equals hypotenuse 1 squared. Again, um, x is cosine, sine is y, so you got um, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And again, SOHCAHTOA, cosine adjacent of hypotenuse, sine's opposite over hypotenuse, tangent's opposite over adjacent. And then secant is the inverse of cosine, so you flip it over. Same with cosecant and cotangent. If you were to do this on your calculator to get an approximate number and not the exact number, what you would be doing is one divided by cosine. Don't use that inverse key, we've talked about that. That second cosine isn't about the inverse of cosine. What it is, is it goes backwards from the number to the angle. So we'll look at that again probably with some story problems if you need to. All right, and then if you need to go back and understand where these numbers come from, the 30, 60, 90 rules and the 45, 45, 90 rules is what you're, what you're using. So pulling out this triangle right here and using your 30, 60, 90 rules, again, we got x for the short side, the hypotenuse is 2x, and the longer leg across from the 60 is x radical 3. We know the radii is 1 on the unit circle. All the radii are 1. And so then going backwards to the short side, you got to start with the short side first. It's half of the hypotenuse, so that makes it 1 half. And then the longer leg is the short leg times radical 3. So 1 half times radical 3 or radical 3 over 2. So that's what gives us these numbers right here. This is the x, radical 3 over 2. This is the y, a half. You went over radical 3 over 2 and up a half. So that's the x and the y. Cosine's x, sine is y. And again, that flips then because of where the 30 and the 60s are, is at. And the 45, 45, 90 numbers come from the 45, 45, 90 rules. X, X, X radical 2. Again, on a 45, 45, 90, the legs are equal. And so going backwards from multiplying by radical 2, you got to divide 1 by radical 2. Rationalizing it gives you radical 2 over 2. And if you could just memorize the first quadrant, then the whole trick on it is remembering then the signs of the numbers in the different quadrants. In the, the second quadrant, the x is negative because you went to the left side, and then you go up, it's positive. And down here then, the x is negative and the y is negative. That's why these are both negative. And then these over here, only the y is negative. So talking a little bit about tangent next, tangent, is the opposite over the adjacent side, which is the y over the x, or you could say sine over cosine. So if you were to take the numbers from the unit circle then and figure out what the numbers are. So on 30, cosine was radical three over two, sine was a half, so here we got for tangent, again, sine was a half, and then the cosine was radical three over two, and doing the math on it then, you get radical three over three, the tangent of 45 is 1, and likewise then the tangent of 60 is radical 3. So these are some numbers you can memorize also and add to your unit circle. And then going back to this, um, oh, putting those numbers on here just to think about the signs of everything. So if you were to put tangent on here, I said that, let's see, at 30, it's radical 3 over 3. So I'll put it on here, radical 3 over 3. And then at 45, it's 1. And then at 60, it's radical 3. Notice both x and y are positive here. So the tangent is going to be positive here. Over here, only one of the numbers are negative. So the tangent over in this column is going to be negative. 
down here, both the x and the y are negative. So you're going to do sine over cosine, so they're both negative. So that makes tangent positive in this quadrant. And so would be, and likewise, cotangent would also be positive, and cotangent there would be negative. All right, and then over in this quadrant, only the y is negative, so doing this, the sine over the cosine, you got negative over positive, so that makes tangent negative over here also. All right, now actually getting to your homework is what, which, what, is what you care about. Oh, let me find it here. All right, so this is page one of your homework. I'll do page two here in a second. So you need to memorize the unit circle. Why do you need to memorize it? Because you'll be expected in some higher level math classes to just know what the numbers are. And it's hard, to, the calculator is not going to give you the exact answers. So to know the exact answers, you need to know the unit circle. It'll come up on um, the SAT test if you take it. They have a non-calculator portion, and you have to know it there. Um, yeah, so just get to know it. If you want to go into something that requires science after school and you've th thought about your career as if you're going to need to go into pre-calculus or calculus, just bite the bullet and memorize it. All right, so the first question here, number one on your homework, it wants you to find the terminal point on a unit circle determined by 7 pi over 6 radians. It's divided by 6. So we said anything with the number 6 on the bottom is probably going to be a 30 degree angle. And you can double check it if you don't have it memorized. Put 180 in for pi. Clean it up, and you'll see here on number one that it makes it 210 degrees right here. And so that is definitely a, and see, 210 degrees is down here. So that is 30 degrees away from 180, so it's a 30 degree angle. Hopefully that's what I just said a second ago. I'm not redoing the video. And so anyway, it's a 30 degree angle. And they wanted to know the exact point. And so again, if you memorize your unit circle, 210 degrees is down here, negative radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Yeah, there it is. All right, then, guys, I got to tell you, this is tough without you guys stopping me and asking questions. I'm going to persevere here, though. All right, and then on the next one, it wanted to know the exact value of the cosine of 7 pi over 6, so that's the problem that we just did. And so from the problem that we just looked at, the cosine is x, which is negative radical 3 over 2. So it goes right there. And then on the next one it says, suppose theta is an angle in standard position whose terminal side intersects the unit circle at negative 35 over, 35 over 37 and 12 over 37. All right, so I made, knowing that x is negative and y is positive, go over negative 35 and up 12. Again, there, it's going to have to be in this quadrant because x was negative, y was positive. That's the second quadrant, which is right here. So there's your reference angle theta. And so we have adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side to that angle is 35. The hypotenuse is 37. Likewise, then the sign they gave us the opposite side was 12. And the hypotenuse then is 37. So this is the triangle that you want to use on the actual question then. And so doing the actual question on it, you just plug in the numbers there. So we got tangent opposite over adjacent. So you got 12 over negative 35. Again, it's quadrant two. So use that to figure out what the sign of everything is in that quadrant. Okay, the next one. They wanted the tangent of 225. And again, if you know it and you've memorized it on the unit circle here, you would know it, the tangent of it. At um, 225 down here, it's a 45 degree angle, and we talked about tangent here a second ago, and tangent is equal to 1. And so the tangent of 225 is equal to positive 1. And I worked out all this stuff here before I realized that I should just do a pre explanation of everything. Okay, cosecant is the inverse of sine, and it's over 4, so it's a 45. And it's 225 again, and so 1 divided by sine, and sine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. So clean it up, and you get the answer then is radical 2. And then down here, uh, let's see, they want the exact value of the sine of 5, 585. That's outside that range of a unit circle of 360 degrees, so we learned to subtract 360 or add it until you get a number within between 0 and 360 and it makes it the sine of 225. 
which on our unit circle then gives us that answer of negative radical 2 over 2. Cotangent against the inverse of tangent, and it's negative, so let's add 2 pi. And if you add 2 pi to it, you get 2 pi over 3. Again, on your calculator, what you can do is negative 4 thirds plus the number 2, and it'll give you the number 2 thirds. So actually, you want the cotangent of 2 thirds, which is 120 degrees if you need it. And so when you do it, the whole thing then, the tangent of 60 is radical 3, and so the cotangent of 60 is 1 over radical 3, which is radical 3 over 3, and it's in the second quadrant over here, so that makes it negative. All right, I hope it helped a little bit. We can talk about it some more. Ask me another question or screenshot one to me, and I'll do your specific question for you. Thank you.